Well, hello everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about what I think is the simplest, easiest, and fastest method of creating really nice, fairly realistic, I would say, neon tube text in Adobe Photoshop. Now, I think this is one of the best techniques. It's sort of a combination of things I've found online over the years and also just stuff that I've been doing for like 10 years when it comes to creating neon effects in Photoshop. I think it's like the perfect balance of spending a, a little bit of time creating the neon text, but also something that's editable and something that is not too difficult to create, but still produces what I think is a pretty cool result and a very versatile effect. Before we jump into this tutorial, as I normally do, I'm selling a course over on tutfit.com. A link just appeared right up there. If you pick up a copy of this course, it really helps support what we're doing here. That course is all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. And even if you're not a, uh, a photography guy or girl, there's still a ton of stuff you can learn about Photoshop, techniques, methods, all sorts of things uh, that you're going to learn about and find useful. But I think most importantly, it just supports what we're doing here at tutfit.com. Helps me spend more time doing these tutorials, producing the best and the greatest content, the most consistently. I want to be making tutorials and videos every single day and the best of the best of the best of the best. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you'll help support us and pick up a copy of that course. But hey, you know what? This tutorial is free. So let's get started right now. This is the effect. This is the finished neon effect. You can see it's glowing over this brick wall. All of us. Uh, it's just sort of a, a phrase that I typed out, not necessarily anything, I guess maybe metaphorical of the fact that we're all in this world and we're all pulling together, or at least most of us are pulling together. Some of us, some of us are trouble, but let's talk about this. I have just uh, this brick texture that I've gone ahead and I've masked in um, just so there's a little sort of spotlight of brick in the middle of this black color fill layer. And it is onto this, which we are going to add our, uh, our neon text. So look, here's how we get started. I'm going to grab the type tool. I think I'm going to set my foreground color to white there. I hit the little flippy arrows and I'm using a, a Bukhari script at 300 points. Uh, center aligned and my text color is set to white so i'm going to type i'll just do the same words i'll say all of us just like that maybe should i do a period and eh, no, i'm not going to do a period i'm going to stick with what i know all of us 300 points looks great i'm going to drag it to the middle of my document uh, i'm getting those little guides that are helping me snap to the middle of my document because under view show i have smart guides turned on i love smart guides some people find them annoying I tend to uh, enjoy them. Now, first thing we're going to do, and the reason that the color of your text doesn't really matter, is because we're going to take the fill opacity slider and we're going to set it to zero. It makes the text disappear. Oh no. Well, don't worry, because we're going to go layer, layer style, and begin with a satin layer style. Look at that. Whoa, that looks kind of uh, crazy. Here in the satin layer style, what we need to do is set the color to white, just a, a straight up solid white, a uh, blend mode of screen, and I think we're going to reduce the opacity down to like 60% or so. This is something we may come in later and tweak and adjust a little bit more. An angle of 30 degrees is perfect. Uh, a distance, we probably want to increase this to like 20 pixels. We want to make sort of the, the, white, the white center stuff to be a little bit smaller. So by increasing the distance and also increasing the size to like 25, you can see how that gives us more of like a thin, this is almost going to be like the, the filament, whatever the gunk is that runs through the neon tubing that's going to be sort of that that lit up stuff in the middle that's what we're creating here with this layer and then the contour the default is this kind of straight uh, you know linear line contour we don't want that we want the invert the inverted v if i hold over the tooltip will tell me what it's called officially uh, i'm sick of waiting we're just going to call it the inverted v uh contour and that's what we want to do there we're also going to apply a bit of a drop shadow and it's going to be a bit of uh, a drastic drop shadow because we need it to be uh, rather huge i'm going to set the blend mode to screen again because we're working over a dark background in general screen is going to help this show up and and more than a drop shadow this is going to be a kind of uh um, a projected glow. It's different than the outer glow because we can move it around in different ways. So I'm going to say blend mode screen and we're going to give it a color of FF uh, DA59, which you can see it's this very light yellow with a moderate amount of saturation. You're starting to see a little bit of like yellow glowy stuff beneath the text. We're going to pump this up here in just a second. I'm going to set the opacity 
Let's go like 75, 77. That's good. Um, I'm going to keep the angle at 90 degrees. I'm going to uncheck use global light though because I don't want to mess around with global light uh, because I know some of our effects, we may be messing with the angles. I'm not I'm not 100% certain right now, but as we go through it, it'll all come back to me. Uh, the distance I need to increase. We're going to go like 25 pixels on the distance. Um, I'm going to bump the spread up to about 10%. And then the size... Uh, I'm going to set it to like 150. Yeah, 150 looks good for this size type. Um, you can see how this is now just like this bright yellowish glow behind this sort of bizarre looking uh, clear sort of glass, but sort of kind of not glass at all looking text outlines. Uh, and I think I'm also going to uncheck layer knocks out drop shadow. So the drop shadow will appear beneath our sort of glass tubing that we've created. Uh, now what we'll do is go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to duplicate this layer now, Command or Control J. I'm going to select the bottom version of it. Well, I'll shut the top version off, just hide it for a second. Right click on the bottom version and choose Clear Layer Style. So it's going to bring us right back to that original white text. Uh, what I need to do is right off the bat, reduce the fill to zero because we, we're going to jump back into layer styles. I'm going to do, uh, to get back into layer styles, I can just double click on this part of the layer out here. Double click. And I'm going to go, uh, let's go to Stroke. Now this is where things are going to kind of get interesting. Um, this is a technique that I saw somebody use a while ago. I, I don't even remember who or where, uh, but it was in a video somewhere online. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, this is sort of how it worked. Uh, we're going to go ahead and apply a stroke. I'm going to go like, I don't know, 100 pixels. Maybe, well, let me set the positioning to center. That what that means is the stroke is going to be centered on the edge of my of my type. You can see, so it's kind of like the stroke, the middle of the stroke is right on the edge of the text. So I'm going to bump this up. I probably need to go up above 100. Let's try like 120. That, that looks probably about right. Um, something like that will that'll work for us pretty well. I'm going to tick on overprint down here. I need to change the blend mode, however, to screen. You're going to see, we're going to see a little bit of a change right off the bat there with this color. We're not going to be rolling with this color though. Um, I do want to make sure my opacity is set to 100%. So size 120, position center, blend mode screen, opacity 100. You check yes for overprint. We're going to change fill type to gradient. And here in the gradient, whoa, I've kind of given the effect away. Let me just undo all of this because I want to show you how to build this effect. This is what you're going to see is you're going to see a black to white gradient set to the style of linear and an angle of 90, 90 degrees is probably what you got uh, and a scale of about 100% uh, is, is going to be sort of the default. So what we want to do is first and foremost change the style the style to this shape burst option, which you can see gives us this really cool effect where we're going just black to white. Um, and because we have the blend mode screen, we're not really seeing the black. You see, if I set the blend mode back to normal, um, the, the black edges are going to reappear, but they're dropping away because we have it set to the blend mode of screen. Uh, we're going to make some changes here, though. So what we want to do is edit the gradient. We need to build a somewhat complex gradient here. So first things first, I need to add a third handle. We need three handles here for for our gradient. Just try to ignore what's going on out here for a second. We're going to set the handle one right here. We're going to give it the color. I have this stuff written down, by the way, so I don't forget it. Uh, F6010D. So it's this very, like, very red, red. I'm going to hit OK. And I want the positioning of this handle. See, right now it's at a location of 0%. I want this to go to the position of 49%. So bam, right there to just before the exact middle of my gradient. I'm going to go ahead and select my second handle here, double click on it, and the color I want this to be is FFE 400, which is like a very, uh, very yellow, yellow, if you will. So go ahead and hit OK. Now the, the location of this, I want this to be 50 percent. So you can see it's just uh, one click ahead of my red uh, gradient. You can see it's giving me this very interesting effect is beginning to take place out here uh, on our text. Just hang with me here for a second. Next up, we're going to go with the white color stop over here, and I'm going to set this to location of 60 percent. I'm going to double click on it because we don't want it to be necessarily white. We're going to give it like a very light yellow color. So we're going to go FFF77B. So you can see it's a very buttery yellow color. Hit OK. That looks good. And now what we need to do is set the um, the top left handle here. We have this opacity slider. We're going to tick down on that and set the opacity to zero. So we're sort of going to fade that red out a little bit. And then what we need to do is take our other opacity slider, because right now this opacity slider is saying, okay, 0% opacity on the left side of the gradient, and it's fading it back to 100% opacity way over here. But you can see it's really killing off the richness and vibrance of our effect. And that's because if you look through here, 
we're losing like 50% of our opacity because it's fading from 100%, well, well, it's fading from 0% opacity all the way up to 100% opacity. So at the halfway point, it's going to be right around 50% opacity. So we need to take our 100% opacity handle and drag it to about the 50% location. And you can see that brings our effect back and fades the red right out to the edges. You see that? So the red is being faded out um, by this one or the zero percent opacity handle, and we're preserving all of our color and richness from the fifty percent location of our gradient over to the right, and it's giving us this really color bursty center of our uh, neon effect. Now, if you want, you can save this gradient. You're probably not going to use it for an awful lot. It's definitely just something you're probably going to use for this type of effect. But we're ready to go ahead and hit OK. And you can see this, I mean, this does a lot. We can increase the size of our stroke a little bit if you really want to increase the red glow on the edges. You can see pumping it up to 180 here is kind of cool. I think I'm actually going to roll with that. Go ahead and hit OK. And now at this point, we're ready to turn our original text layer back on. And it's going to add this entire overall glow to what we've got going on. Now, if you wanted at this point, you could try setting this to a, a, a blend mode of like color burn or color dodge is probably not going to do much of anything for us. Maybe I'll just set it to normal and do something like reduce the opacity a little bit because I definitely like to be able to see the subtleties of that extra squiggled highlight going through the middle of um, going through the middle of my neon tube text. In fact, one of the things that we can do here is double click on the all of us text here that's on top. Apply a color overlay of like black, black is perfect, and then set it to a blend mode of something like soft light, and just tone the opacity of this back. So this is just going to bring and tone down a little bit of the just overpowering brightness there in the center of our uh, of our text. We can also go to that drop shadow. Let's try shutting the drop shadow off for a second. You see how that really allows the red to shine through? What that's telling me is probably my drop shadow should be a little bit of a darker slash reddish color. That's really going to help bring out the red in the in the stroke glow a little bit more. So I'm going to tweak this to more of like a reddish orange color. You can see kind of something like that is great. And maybe what I'll do is increase the distance a little bit more. Maybe push the distance out to about 50. Looks good. Hit OK. And you can see now we've really pulled together uh, our neon effect. We've got a little bit more of a glow coming off of it. And the last thing I would want to do is select the bricks layer. And right above the bricks, I want to just go ahead and add a color balance adjustment layer and just pump in reds, maybe a little bit of yellow and a little bit of magenta and begin coloring this. So I'm going to go to highlights as well. Reds, yellows, or I'm sorry, yellows and reds. We're not affecting the color of our neon text because we have this adjustment layer beneath it. We're just changing the overall ambient color of the brick wall because we want it to kind of match this glowing red coming off the neon should be what's coloring the brick. So we're going to really increase the red in the shadows. Let me increase, ooh, no, not, not, much, not too much yellow in the shadows. That looks bad. I'm going to go through even a little bit of blue, a little bit of magenta in the shadows. That looks pretty cool, right? You see how much that just changed that? If we tick on Preserve Luminosity, yeah, if we tick on Preserve Luminosity, that really does a lot for us. Let's, let's tone this whole effect back. So I'm going to increase the red, and now it's just like super, super dark. So I'll just start scrolling the opacity of this color balance layer back until it looks just right. So there's without a color balance adjustment layer, there it is with the color balance adjustment layer. And we have a really, really cool effect. If you wanted, you could add some finishing noise to it to just really help blend things together. We can do that by just adding a new layer. I'm going to name it Grain. We fill it with 50% uh, gray, e uh, edit, fill, 50% gray. And I like to use the camera raw filter. And here under the effects tab, we just increase the grain here. Uh, the size probably doesn't have to be too big and we'll increase the roughness a bit. There we go. I like to use this grain because it's, it's just so much more organ organic Excuse me, than the uh, filter noise, add noise option. And we can set this to like soft light and just really reduce the opacity quite a bit. And it's almost not even noticeable, but where it's going to be noticeable is when you zoom in and like look at the edges of where the, the glow runs into the wall. You can see without grain, it just it looks too smooth and too perfect. With grain, it's just blended so beautifully and so nicely. It just looks right. And that's really the last step. So did you enjoy that? Did you like that? If you did, leave a little like on this video. Drop a comment down below if you feel so inclined. And make sure you subscribe to this channel so you never miss another video in the future. For creating this, I think, somewhat speedy and versatile, realistic neon tube text in Photoshop. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.